Okay, chemists, in this lesson, we are going to learn how we apply what are called the kahn ingold prelog rules to naming specific stereoisomers of a chemical compound. Uh, namely, how do we name different enantiomers and diastereomers? And let me run through those rules first, developed by a group of chemists back in the 1950s, and then we'll look at some examples. So first of all, the rules are such that you find an asymmetric carbon. So there's one right there in that lactic acid molecule off to the right. Secondly, you prioritize the four different groups that are attached to that asymmetric carbon, one, two, three, and four. How do you prioritize them? This is what the rules are, according to the kahn ingold prelog rules. Uh, if it has a higher atomic number, that gets a higher priority. So based on how many protons it has, it's got a higher priority. What if you get a tie? What if you have an asymmetric carbon and there are two carbons attached to it? Well, carbon and carbon of the same atomic number. Then you keep going this, until you break that tie, uh, same distance from that original asymmetric carbon. So if I look at this, I have an H, an OH, and then two carbons attached to it. Well, the OH gets number one because oxygen has the highest priority, highest atomic number of those four. Uh, the methyl and the carboxylic acid, it might help if I draw what those actually look like. Remember, that's what a carboxylic acid looks like, and that's what a methyl looks like. So we get to carbon versus carbon, that's a tie. But this carbon here is attached to oxygens, whereas this one is only attached to hydrogens. So the carboxylic acid carbon I would give priority two, and the methyl I would give priority three, and that means the H is priority four. Once you've got those priorities, you then uh, use your right and left hand to distinguish which direction this molecule has. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this, but this is the one that I think is the most useful, uh, what I call the right and left hand rule. Uh, you use your thumbs and you point them in the direction of the lowest priority group, in this case number four. And on your piece of paper, H is pointing straight up or parallel to the piece of paper. And then your fingers naturally curl in one direction or the other based on which hand you're looking at. And they happen to be mirror images of each other. That's why having both of your hands to do this is necessary. Um, and if it follows the left hand, we give it an S designation for sinister, which is Latin for left. And if it follows the right hand, we give it an R designation for rectus, uh, which is Latin for right. So if I look at this, uh, I hold both of my hands sort of in front of the molecule. And I imagine this as if it's like a tripod with this CH bond straight up vertically and then three things in order, one, two, and three, and they are going in that direction, and that seems to mimic my left hand. This is a left-handed molecule, so it gets the S designation. That's how it works. And if the H is not pointing straight up in the plane of the page, I can certainly move my hands so that the H's, or the H, uh, matches up wherever my thumbs are. There's different ways of doing this rule that you find in different textbooks, but I find that using your hands is actually the easiest one because you don't have to redraw the molecule, you just reposition your two enantiomeric hands in front of you. So let's try the one below this and see how well we do. Here's an asymmetric carbon right in the middle, and then if I prioritize my groups, I have uh, bromine has the highest atomic number, followed by chlorine, followed by carbon on the methyl, followed by hydrogen the last. If there's an H, it's always the fourth priority. It's the lowest atomic number, it's one. Now that dashed line, remember, is the hydrogen going straight into the piece of paper. So I'm looking at mine, and or if you're looking at it on the screen, it's going straight into the screen. And I see a clockwise one, two, three for the remaining three substituents. We're leaving the fourth one out once we line it up with our, our thumbs. We're looking at if our fingers curl in the direction one, two, three with our left hand or our right hand. Uh, and if I point my thumbs into the piece of paper, and I'm going like right into the piece of paper, it looks like one, two, three follows a clockwise direction and my right hand actually works. So this is an R asymmetric carbon. So that's it. So every asymmetric carbon has either an R or an S designation if you get an infinite tie, you're accidentally trying to identify uh, a non-asymmetric carbon, and that doesn't have R or S designations. So let's look at a bunch of examples down below. Here we have the molecule epichlorohydrin. Uh, there is an asymmetric carbon right there, and if I prioritize, oxygen gets number one. 
Uh, then I have a, three, a, a tie, carbon versus carbon. The carbon on the left is attached to a chlorine. The carbon on the right is further attached to an oxygen, and chlorine has a higher atomic number, so that carbon beats that carbon. And then H, I'm not even going to label. It's going straight into the page with a dashed line. How do I know that? Well, the oxygen on that epoxide is coming out of the page. So uh, this has the direction H going straight into the page and one, two, three in a counterclockwise direction. So my left hand works for that. So this is an S asymmetric carbon. And just fun uh, shortcut, look around and find the enantiomer. If you were correct in your assignment of the original molecule, the enantiomer must have the opposite orientation. So this is gonna be the R enantiomer of the same molecule. Right next to it in B, we've got a bromine going into the page, an ethyl on the right-hand side, and a methyl on the left-hand side, and H this time coming straight out of your piece of paper. And in order for my thumbs to come straight out of the page and follow one, two, three in a clockwise direction, I get my left hand, so that's an S asymmetric carbon. Let's see if I can find this enantiomer. There it is down there, so that must be the R configuration. So there's a couple of examples. Why don't you hit pause and see if you can get the rest of them and come back and see how you did. Okay, let's take a look. So in C, uh, C is quite tricky. There's a lot of different groups here. We've got to prioritize. Uh, we've got carbon versus carbon versus carbon versus oxygen. So between those four, uh, my oxygen gets the highest priority. And then between these carbons, uh, I've got a carbon attached to an oxygen and a chlorine, as opposed to a carbon attached to multiple fluorines. So how do we break this tie? Well, it's uh, a question of higher atomic number, and the highest atomic number I see next is the chlorine. Even though there's multiple fluorines, that doesn't matter. One chlorine beats three fluorines in this example, because chlorine has a higher atomic number. So this carbon gets second priority. Uh, the CF3 group would get third, and the methyl would actually get fourth priority. My thumbs are going straight into page one, two, three in a counterclockwise direction. This is the S in antimer. Uh, and if I look around, I almost see the enantiomer in the lower left, but, but that's actually not the enantiomer. That's just a completely different molecule. In fact, it looks like it has the same configuration at that asymmetric carbon, but look more carefully. The chlorine in C is now an OH in G. So when you prioritize these, you still get O-methyl as one, but now the CF3 group becomes second in priority because a fluorine beats an oxygen when I'm comparing this carbon versus this carbon and how many atoms away I am from the asymmetric carbon. And then the carboxylic acid gets three. So my thumb is still going into the plane of the page where the methyls are, but this time one, two, three is in a clockwise direction. This has R. Uh, stereochemistry. So even though the the configuration of what's going on at that carbon looks identical in both of those, we've actually changed the priorities by what the groups are. So we need to be able to communicate this on, on paper if we're not drawing a structure. Okay, there's just a few left. If I look at D, uh, this is very similar to the molecule above. It's just drawn a little differently. We have uh, the highest priority is the OH number one, carboxylic acid two, and a methyl three. This is one of the trickier ones because where is that H? It's not, it's not coming out of the page toward me and it's not going into the page away from me. It's like in the plane of the page. So I'm, I'm imagining my thumbs parallel to that CH bond. I'm pointing both of my hands so that that happens. And I, I envision a tripod knocked over on its side. And I'm just picturing what this looks like in 3D. And that makes my right hand work for this. So this is an R designation. Uh, pan over to the right. Uh, example F is actually the mirror image, so that's going to be the S uh, enantiomer. And then that's one left right in the middle, a pretty unique one. We have an asymmetric carbon right there. How do I prioritize? Well, the O is highest. The H is coming out toward me. That's lowest in priority. So I have a tie, carbon versus carbon. Uh, the one on the left is attached to all carbons, but the one on the right is attached to two hydrogens and a carbon. So here's a case where actually more carbons beats fewer carbons when you're comparing the same type of atom on each side. You do break the tie by having more of the same type of atom. 
So more carbons on the left. So this gets two, and this what's called allyl group gets three. This time the H is coming straight out toward me. How do I know that? The OH is dashed. So the H on that carbon is coming out toward me. And then my fingers curl naturally with my right hand to give me a uh, counterclockwise direction. So that would be R. So you should have gotten SSS, RRS, and then RRR for those. Lastly, let's wrap this up and uh, turn this around and take a name with a given designation of RRS and modify an otherwise ambiguous drawing to have it make sense. Here's the carbone molecule we looked at a few lessons ago, and they want me to modify this to make it an S enantiomer. Well, first I gotta find out where the asymmetric carbon is. It's right there, because there's an H, an isopropenyl, a secondary carbon attached to a ketone, and a secondary carbon attached to an alkene. I want it to be S. Well, the hydrogen is lowest in priority, that's four. So I'm just gonna worry about the other three, and I'll label them, and then we'll fill in the hydrogen as a result. The highest priority is gonna be the isopropenyl on the left, because that's a carbon attached to only other carbons, as opposed to a CH2 and a CH2, those are lower. Now between those two CH2 groups, I have to look at what's attached beyond that. Well, the carbon at the bottom of the ring is attached to a carbon, and then the carbon at the top part of the ring is also attached to another carbon. So now I'm comparing this carbon with this carbon against each other, and now I get a tiebreaker. That one in the lower right of the ring is attached to an oxygen, as opposed to that one up here, which is attached to H's and more carbons. So that means that this carbon closer to the ketone is number two, and that carbon at the top there is number three. I want this to be S. So now I put my right hand away and I only work with my left hand, and I want my fingers to curl one, two, three in that direction. So that means that my H is actually going into the piece of paper. One, two, three, carbon, carbon, carbon. So I have that designation. One, two, and then three. Uh, which must mean the one right below it would have an H coming out of the page toward me. So hit pause one more time and try the other uh, four examples and see how you did. Come back and check. Okay, let's take a look. So the next one is an epinephrine molecule. They want it to be R. And I have to find the asymmetric carbon. There it is. Uh, my priorities are the oxygen gets number one. Then I've got carbon versus carbon. That carbon on the right is attached to a nitrogen, so that's going to get two. And then the, uh, oh no, wait a second, wait a second. Carbon versus carbon, yes, no, that's right. The carbon attached to the nitrogen gets two, and then the carbon on the left would get three. I want this to be R, so I want my right hand to work. And I want my fingers to curl in a counterclockwise direction, so my thumb is pointing out of the page. So this would actually have an H with a bold line, which must mean the S enantiomer would have it with a dashed line. And then the last one, here's the ibuprofen molecule. We saw this before, we can practice again. They want it to be S in the beginning. Find the asymmetric carbon, there it is right there. Prioritize the top three. Number one is gonna be that carboxylic acid carbon. Two would be the, the aromatic ring. Three would be the methyl. So I want my left hand to work because this is S and I have to have my fingers curl in a uh, clockwise direction. That means my thumb is coming out of the page. So I fill in a bold line with the H like that, which means this one is a dashed line. It's worth uh, just closing up with saying like, you know, how do I point this particular group to show that it's going into the page? Is it incorrect if I were to draw it down here or up here? Technically, that's the same thing, so it's sort of a personal preference of where it seems to fit nicely in the structure because you're just sort of looking at the molecule a little bit more on one edge as opposed to the other, and the orientation of a group down below, you know, is it going to your right or your, your left? It's just a slight perspective difference. It looks very different if I were to have it drawn over here, but it's really the dashed line that's the most important part of this, and everything else is implied. Okay, so that's how we use the Kahn and Gold Prelog prioritizations to rank groups attached to asymmetric carbons and ultimately how we name chiral molecules with an R or an S configuration. Thanks for watching.